uh, this uh, video is going to be about basically getting uh, your music analyzed uh, via mixed in key uh, and getting it exported out to record box uh, via in a exported to a record box formatted USB uh, so that when you are playing on CDJs at a club, a festival, show, at home, in your bedroom, uh, you will have your full artist information, album, album art, uh, BPM information, beat grid, waveform, and uh, energy levels, uh, key and Camelot notation instead of uh, flats or sharps, uh, which are a little bit more readable uh, on the fly. Um, so let's go ahead and get to it. Um, I already have a handful of uh, songs uh, analyzed in uh, mixed in key, uh, ready to go. Uh, as you can see, um, I originally dropped them into iTunes uh, so that iTunes can organize where the files are. Then I just you know showed them in Finder, you know where they're at uh, on my hard drive here, and then drag and dropped the files from. Finder into mixed in key. Pretty straightforward. I don't really think you, you need to be shown how to do that. It's fucking simple. Um, one thing I do like about mixed in key is because I'm lazy, it will allow you to do, uh, you know, set up Serato cue points on songs automatically. Uh, so, like you'll see here, uh, it has, you know, eight cue points that you can kind of go through. Uh, it's usually pretty good. You can see where it's kind of like at at a drop, at a at a break, and then you know so on and so forth uh, throughout this song. Uh, pretty good uh, setup for the cue points. I would probably go in and adjust them manually if I was prepping for a show. Um, probably set some memory cue, additional memory cues for uh, you know going about you know, twelve to twenty odd bars uh, before the drop, so I can kind of count down. Uh, and have give myself some uh, some room. All right, uh, and then uh, from here, uh, since I am personally lazy, or maybe you know, you're coming from Serato because uh, you have a, like you have a Pioneer controller, or Newmark controller, or, you know whatever, uh, but you really want to learn CDJs and you have a chance uh, with your friend or your you're playing at a club and they're like, fuck your controller, fuck your laptop, learn to play on CDJs, and uh, when you just drop mp3 files on a USB uh, and then you load them up onto a CDJ, it's going to analyze the waveform. It can uh, take quite a while, depending on the age of the CDJ, for it to fully get the, the full waveform. Uh, and it, it'll, it'll pull up any ID3 tag information, but you really won't have a lot of the cool shit uh, that you get by dumping stuff into record box first before exporting. Um, so uh, on Mac OS uh, right now there is a, an application called Record Buddy. It's not free. Uh, it's uh, about 50 bucks. It's worth it uh, if you have a lot of songs to, to do. And the, uh, the developer is small. He's a really cool guy. Uh, it's basically like him and like maybe like another good couple people or something. I'm not sure. Um, worth the price. Buy it if you really want to use it. Uh, don't pirate it. I don't think you can even because it's got a, a key and everything. There's no way to crack it currently as far as I know. Um, but just buy it. He's a cool guy. Um, the interface is fairly simple. Um, so going to get to it, honestly. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Um, after analyzing, uh, I usually just go into uh, Serato to double check everything. Um, and since it's Serato, it's pulling up my iTunes library and all these songs that have been analyzed already and had their cue points exported to them are already in my, my iTunes library, so they're just going to be right here. Um, I already scanned them earlier for, like, analyzed them. Uh, in Serato, I don't have set key or set beat grid uh, because I'm not really a fan of uh, well, so, well, one you know, setting key is kind of pointless if you do it in mixed in key. Mixed in key's algorithm is way better. Um, I don't do set beat grid because I do that in Record Box, um, 
Record Box 5 came out recently, and its uh, analysis engine is really quite good, uh, especially compared to uh, versions 3 or 4, and it's kind of above Serato at this point, but just below Tractor. Um, so, you know, for instance, I, I analyze this song, it'll, you know, update the comment tag there uh, so that it has, like, the energy, because that's one of the settings uh, that I have in Mixed in Key to do is uh, update tags uh, so that I have the key and the energy in the comment field, and it overwrites any comments uh, when importing into or analyzing in Mixed in Key. Um, the because you know when you get stuff from like Beatport or Bandcamp or online anywhere, um, don't pirate your music kids, support the artists. Um, things will just be in the comment field for no fucking reason, and overriding it with you know the you know your your key and your energy level is just really good for at a glance stuff. You can also use like the star ratings in iTunes or in Record Box to denote uh, energy level if you really want to from a, a one to five scale. Um, so you can see, like on this song, there's already eight hot cues uh, set up that you can kind of go through. Uh, it always sets one of the first beat. No matter what, it's uh, pretty handy. So you can just hit that hot cue and go. Uh, and then there's you know another one here. Um, but as you can see, it's already already kind of all there. Uh, let's go ahead and jump out of Serato. Kill mixed in key and iTunes. Kill that. Kill these. Um, and then go to Record Buddy. You can't have any of the applications open. Uh, you can't have Serato. You can't have iTunes. You can't have Record Box open uh, when uh, Record Buddy is when you want Record Buddy to do its thing. Uh, first of all, uh, you, one of the settings you're going to want to set is protect this database for Serato uh, so that it just works. And then duplicate hot cues as memory cues. Uh, memory cues are very handy on CDJs, especially uh, older ones. Uh, the CDJ 2000 Nexus, uh, the Nexus 1 series, and older only support three hot cues uh, hardware on board. And uh, but they support up to ten memory cues, uh, so it can be pretty handy to uh, replicate those hot cues over to memory cues uh, for uh, backwards compatibility. Really nice. Um, and that's pretty much any version, uh, any of the older stuff. I think the even like the CDJ 900s, 900 Nexus uh, support up to ten memory cues. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty damn sure. Um, CJ2000, 2000, 2000 Nexus, fine. Uh, Nexus 2, if you're looking to play on, on one of those, has two banks of four hot, cu hot cues and also supports the 10 memory cues. Uh, the reason why I like memory cues better is because it gives you a bar countdown or, or beat countdown to the next uh, memory cue from uh, queue to queue. Uh, so you can kind of uh, know roughly how much time you have before the next queue, like so you can kind of arrange things for like 12 bars from the drop and then you have like the drop or you have uh, you know a build up and you put something you know halfway through the build up so you know uh, where you're at kind of thing and it just really helps kind of uh, let you know where you're at in the song and it's uh, right under the phase meter uh, whether you're using phase meter one or two it's just really handy information to have on screen um, and then you know, on the record box side, uh, you don't protect that database because you want to be able to write to that database. Um, I'll get to the record box configuration here in a second uh, when I when I after I'm done syncing. Um, one note is uh, you know the Nexus 2 series only supports the the eight hot cues, but in software, uh, if you're using DVS or if you're using um, you know a controller. Uh, it supports up to record box five supports up to 16 hot cues per song now um, it's just it's fucking crazy um, oh, where'd it go and then on the general tab you want to use your key notation for as Camelot so that it, it Camelot's just really easier easier to read than using flats or sharps uh, unless you really know your your music uh, notation I don't particularly well like not at a glance 
Uh, so I use Camelot. Um, and then, you know, after that, uh, you just hit the sync button, and it'll initialize the sync button. It'll parse all the tracks. Uh, it can it can take a few minutes to do, uh, especially if this is the first time you're doing it. Um, you know, probably about two three minutes, maybe five. Uh, I've had to take as long as ten on a slower hard drive. Um, but subsequent actions, you know, if you're only adding you know five six songs or whatever, it's not going to take very long at all. Um, yeah, just got to be patient for this part. You can see if there's any kind of uh, issues with uh, you know, key notation. Like some sometimes uh, mixing key will mark a song with an all key for some fucking stupid reason. Makes no sense. Uh, and but Record Buddy will mark that as invalid. Um, yeah. Sometimes you'll get you know weird errors about the track. Uh, you can usually fix those by either re-downloading or re-importing. You know what have you. Um, I need to do that for that song. It was giving me trouble earlier. And it saves the record body database, then it syncs over uh, to the record uh, box uh, XML database, which I will show you what that's all about here in just a second. So let's go ahead and quit out of record buddy. We're going to open up record box five. Once again, highly recommend going up to record box five. The analysis engine is beautiful thing. I, I reanalyzed all of my tracks uh, recently and it fixed a lot of beat and grid issues that I was having on uh, some of my favorite tracks that, you know, it's just, you know, when the beat grid, grid is off it's kind of annoying when you're bringing a new track and you're getting, you're using the phase meter and uh, you're just being lazy and not doing shit by ear like you should be. Um, but that's another here over there. Uh, accurate beat grids are just always a lovely thing. So let's first go into the record box configuration. Uh, this is the, uh, the, you go into the preferences and advanced uh, database. Uh, this is the default location. That is where Record Buddy will default to. Uh, there is a way to change uh, where, this, where this database is, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. I haven't had any luck with it actually working that. So if you delete, if by default is there's nothing nothing is going to be there. Uh, so you just hit return and it will fill out the default location and you're golden. That's all you have to do. Uh, and that's where the record buddy uh, has written, record buddy has written its XML file to you with all your cool shit in there. Uh, under the anal analysis side, you know, I set the BPM range to, you know, mine, your, your users might be different, might not. Uh, I also sell it, uh, tell it to analyze uh, BPM and grid just to be consistent. Uh, auto analysis enable, so when I drag it from the XML uh, database to my main database, it's going to go ahead and analyze everything and pick it up. Um, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Uh, and that's kind of it. Uh, performance mm -hmm. mode for processing is very handy because it'll just go a lot faster. Um, that's it for the, sh the record box configuration side. Uh, so you just expand this out, all tracks, and you can see uh, all these here. Let me refresh this. So you should see, you, know, you drop into here. 
So I've got, you know, the, it duplicated the, the hot cues and it has hot cues there. Um, so I'm just going to drop here and import into my collection. I'm just going to click yes because I've already imported these and it's just getting the updating some stuff on them. And it'll probably take a second because they're loading up a bunch of shit. I have this database sorted by date added. Unfortunately, Rekordbox doesn't have a date time, just the date. Um, so if, depending on how you add it, it could be you know pretty much anything. Um, like if you're adding a bunch of songs on the same day and you know whatever, uh, but if you do like hours separated at a time and you're like, wait, where the fuck is it? You know, it'll be kind of uh, a little infuriating. Uh, let's dump all of these as well. Fucking mouse. Dump here. For some even more fun. Yes. Uh, go here. So we've got it here. Uh, didn't pick up the fucking cues. So. Sometimes Ranked Buddy, the Serato is just a fucking piece of shit. But as you can see, I got all of these cue points that, uh, well, some of these are just missing. Um, Sometimes it can be hit and miss. It's, it's, uh, files get weird sometimes. Don't. Um, but yeah, like that one. But. but the the main point being, uh, you have these files that are now in your library with your cue points brought over from Serato. Uh, I think some of these are just old entries. They did change some metadata. Oh well. Um, yeah, the fucking piece of junk. Uh, anyways, uh, let's take save these three songs and dump it into a playlist here. And that's you know, there. Um, I'm going to take this. We're going to Open up the sync manager. That's where uh, you, everything is going to be on your USB. Um, if you have multiple USBs plugged in, you just select which one you want to do, um, and you just you know, check your your playlists, and then copy it over there. And it's going to copy down here with the progress bar, and then it's just going to delete stuff that's not in the playlist anymore. It's pretty handy. Automates a lot of shit. Uh, the cool thing about Rekordbox 5 is you can also now import from a USB to your collection, um, which is super handy if you just have a friend coming over and you want to get everything prepped properly. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the long and short of it. Uh, Record Buddy is kind of a middleman if you're lazy like I am. Uh, if you just want to drop everything into Rekordbox, um, for analysis and just set your, all your cue points manually. Highly recommend that too, uh, just to kind of get into practice. Um, and then kind of all the same steps as far as uh, getting everything set and exported properly. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns or whatever, and you know, just leave a comment, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, you can hit me on Twitter at DJ Ducky the Ninja, uh, or you can go to Ducky the Dot Ninja for the website and get links to all my social media uh, bullshit. Uh, cool. Thanks, guys.